Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have a video for you on how you can create a DAG that will extract uh, data from the Google API and store it in an S3 bucket, uh, specifically in this case for YouTube videos. So what we'll be doing is searching for up to 50 uh, YouTube videos in a given time range uh, on a given YouTube channel. Uh, and then we're gonna save that response in S3 after a pat and then pass over the YouTube IDs to the next request, which then gets the information for those requested videos and then saves the information around those videos in that same S3 bucket. So we'll get the amount, you know, the first 50 videos of a YouTube channel um, based on two dates. And then we're gonna use that information to run another query, which is then going to give us the information about those specific movies. Um, so the only thing kind of pre-set up you'll need to do is that you'll need to make sure your uh, Google API to S3 operator is able to authenticate to the Google Cloud API. So you're gonna need to set up your own API endpoint there. And I will drop documentation um, down in the link below for you to check that out. But without further ado, start building our DAX. Um, and same as uh, almost any Amazon thing, just all you're gonna need to install is the Amazon provider packages. So nothing else for Google because the Amazon uh, package for Google uh, API operator 2S3 is actually made by Amazon, shockingly enough, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, and then, so here within the file, after you've made that import, um, you're going to want to import the following modules. Um, so here we have uh, annotations, JSON, date time, Bluetooth 3. This is just a really easy tool for interacting with S3 buckets uh, programmatically. Then we're also just going to import some base Airflow uh, packages. So Airflow settings, task, connection, chain, DAG, just helping us write our DAG. Um, and then the specific Amazon operators we're going to need are S3 create bucket operator, S3 delete bucket operator, the obvious uh, Google API to S3 operator. And then we're also going to use trigger rules um, and an environment ID key and system context builder for just authenticating, creating a session within uh, AWS that we can then use to run the DAG. Um, and then what about the actual DAG? Well, let's get started. So here, before we actually create the DAG, we're going to need to set a bunch of different variables just that we're going to use throughout the DAG. So here we're going to have our YouTube channel ID. So change this to whatever channel you want to use. Um, and you can get just by going to a given YouTube channel and going up here to uh, the URL. And then you're just going to get this string of numbers and letters here. Um, so here, going to copy and paste and then bring it back here um, and get my YouTube channel ID. And then actually re-add the commas. Oh, and I'm not even sharing the screen. There we go. So, sorry guys, there we are. Um, so here just added my own YouTube channel ID just to make it more interesting for myself. Um, and 2023 to 2023. Uh, then YouTube parts, just the snippets that you want of a particular YouTube video. Um, and then these are the fields that we're going to get for these specific videos once we actually go and get the videos. Uh, then, so this basically just, if you wanna get other pieces of information around a given video, just add them to uh, the string of items here. Um, so there we have all the different DAG configuration. Uh, then we have our secret ARN key. So this is the secret ARN key you're gonna need to generate from Amazon. Um, and then this will just allow you to use that to actually test variables and create that connection into Amazon. Um, and then obviously have to add that to our system context builder so we can create kind of that uh, Amazon, I guess, virtual environment that we're uh, going into to actually access our S3 bucket. Um, so now that we have kind of the basic variables set up, next thing we need to do is create a Python test that is going to connect, create a connection into GCP. Um, so there isn't, you might've noticed just like a uh, straight up Google API uh, operator. So what we're going to do is create a connection to from our secrets manager, uh, get some secrets value, which is stored in AWS, and then creating a connection to Google Cloud Platform. So here, this is why we uh, added the Airflow settings thing. So we can just create connections directly here in Python, um, say the scope is going to be for this particular API, um, and then adding these all. So our key file, so our authentication method, um, all into this connection into GCP. And then what we're gonna be doing here is just taking that connection, pinging it, and then adding 
all the necessary secrets information uh, into this session. So what we're doing basically just setting up this session that's going to allow us to both connect to GCP and also be able to retrieve secrets data from AWS, um, which includes you know the scope for uh, the YouTube API. So the scope here that we're setting uh, within this connection. So being able to authenticate into Google Cloud Platform and then connect to that API endpoint authenticating via a secret that is stored within our AWS Secrets Manager. Uh, if you're not using a Secrets Manager, you can just swap this whole part out for just the raw secrets. doesn't really matter. Um, this is just the example that Amazon wanted to use. So it's the example I'm using to show you. Um, and I mean, it's useful because this is probably what you want to do in production as well. Um, so after we're done with that, we're also going to create a second task, which is just going to wait for the S3 bucket to uh, be created. So just making sure that an S3 bucket is created before we actually try and use it. So here using that boat to three client, setting the task ID of wait for S3 bucket, uh, get waiter bucket exists. Uh, once that bucket uh, has been confirmed to exist, set the bucket name to that S3 bucket name. Um, and then after we're done with that, we have another task, which is going to be transforming video IDs. And so essentially all this is going to be doing is extracting the video IDs from a previous task's output. So when we do that initial ping to get a list of videos, those videos come with a bunch of extraneous information, those API requests. We just want the video IDs. So we're taking them from that previous task and see from the task instance here, video IDs S3, uh, just normalizing them, adding them array, and then saving them within, within uh, S3 and pushing them back into our XCOMs as well. So they can be used later. So you can see here using that XCOM push method to uh, push the video IDs out into uh, our XCOMs so we can use them further down in the pipeline. Then once we're done with that, what we're going to do is finally create our DAG. So here we're just using a very, very basic uh, DAG ID setup. Um, and then, you know, there's really nothing important to call out here. We set the DAG ID up here as example, uh, Google API to S3. And then we are going to set a few more variables that we're just going to basically use the things we set earlier um, to actually interact. So here, test context equals sys uh, test context task setting our environment ID, so the environment uh, for that system context reason to actually interact, uh, setting our connection ID, uh, and then also setting our secret ARN. Then what we're going to do is set up a connection. So here, set up a connection by using our create connection uh, GCP method. So here we're going to feed in our connection ID name, secret ARN. So this is going to be item potent for each DAG run because that connection ID is actually being created with that uh, environment ID that is being pulled for that specific environment uh, that we actually are creating. Then once we're done with that, we can then also use that environment ID to create a unique S3 bucket here. Uh, then we have our S3 create bucket operator that we're using to actually create it, as well as our wait for bucket creation. It's just kind of a fail safe in case the bucket takes too long um, and would get tri wouldn't be ready in time for us to actually use the Google API to S3 operator. Watch is the next step in the DAG. So this is what the title of video is. So here you have it, which you all came to see, the Google API to S3 operator. Um, so here we're setting our uh, task ID, API service name, in this case, YouTube, to make sure you're using the most current API service version. Uh, endpoint path is youtube.search.list here. And then what this is going to do is just using all those parameters, our video published after, published before, the type, the fields we want to get, which is the video ID, um, and then the max results. And then we have Google API response via XCOM equals video IDs response. So just giving us uh, those responses, saving them as videos uh, IDs response, as well as our destination key. So just giving that path to that bucket we created, sorry, with the S3 bucket name that we created up here. Um, so S3 overwrite, if there's already anything there, we're just gonna overwrite it because why not, right? Um, and then after we've collected those video IDs, we're then going to call that task we defined earlier to just transform and pull just the specific video IDs out of that uh, list of video IDs and kind of extraneous information. And then once we're done with that, we're then going to feed the video IDs back into this Google API to S3 operator. We're again using you know the same YouTube V3 endpoint, uh, and then we're using this YouTube videos that list. But here we are passing it the list of our different video IDs and just getting the fields, uh, which again, we defined up here. So the description published at tags and title um, and saying we just want those specific fields um, and we only want you know the parts for the specific YouTube IDs that we just got. Um, and then 
saving those back into the same S3 bucket. Um, then after that, we are just going to use the uh, delete S3 bucket operator to just delete this bucket. Again, this is just purely resource consumption saving. So if you want to actually save the information, don't add this, but I don't want to pay for S3 buckets that I'm not really going to be actively using. So always best practices for me. And then after that, we will use the chain method to chain this all together into one coherent uh, DAG. So here, just basically listing out all the tasks that we just created. Um, and then that's it. Um, we, we have our DAG. So I'll kick over to the Airflow UI now and show you what this DAG looks like um, actually within there. So here in the Airflow API, or UI, sorry, not API, uh, but API is top of mind. There's no need to set any connections um, because we set those connections in the actual DAG level. If you didn't do that, if you want to swap it out, this is where you create a connection to DCP. And that would just essentially be taking the piece that you know we set up earlier where we built uh, the connection in our create connection DCP and just substituting this for an actual connection you'll create. Um, and then here, just having it's a chain DAG. So nothing really complicated here, but just wanted to show you, you know, hey, here are all the different steps that you have just built within the DAG, creating the connection, creating an S3 bucket, waiting for that S3 bucket to be created, um, then using obviously the Google API to S3 operator, transforming the video IDs, saving that video data to S3, and then finally deleting that S3 bucket for cleanup. Um, so I hope you found this video helpful, kind of a recursive video, getting information on my own channel. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed and have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.